I've always liked to help people, and really in the utility business, particularly public utilities, that's what we're all about. We're helping make lives better through our product. Colorado Springs Utilities as a utility is very unique. With us being a municipal, we deal with all four utilities, electric, gas, water, and wastewater, both in distribution and generation. And there are very few municipalities in the country that do those four things. We're kind of unique in the fact we've been doing that a long time. It makes it great for our customers. It makes it great for the employees. Being community owned, we get to choose what's right for Colorado Springs. We don't have someone in another state deciding what's right for us. Gas for Colorado Springs was first used for illumination and Colorado Springs Utilities, the predecessor company, did what was known as coal gasification, where they produced gas off of coal. Streetlights were um, gas for a while, but we had our first power plant in Colorado Springs in 1886, and its job was to supply five streetlights um, for their electrical needs from sunset to midnight every night. It also supplied about 300 other homes and businesses for lighting needs only. Hydro power is really sort of the beginning source of supply um, here in Colorado Springs and nationwide. The hydros are unique in the fact that they're both part of the electric system and part of the water system. We use them to reduce water pressure on the pipes coming down out of the mountains and we use that pressure reduction to make electricity. Back in 1925, when the city acquired the utility system in Colorado Springs, Manitou Hydro was the main power plant for Colorado Springs. So last year, Manitou Hydro won a Hall of Fame award through Hydro Review Magazine. We won it because the plant's over 100 years old and has remained in operation, but also because of its high head or high pressure status of being one of the highest pressure plants in the world. Back when electricity was brand new, Thomas Edison and his group was promoting direct current as the way to supply the world for electricity. And there was another group mostly financed by George Westinghouse and Nikola Tesla to supply the world with AC. AC won out because of its simplicity and mostly the fact that you can transmit long distances with it. In the engineering world today, we're seeing a big resurgence in the popularity of Nikola Tesla and the work he did about 100 years ago. Legends about Nikola Tesla in Colorado Springs are, um, I've lost track of the truth. Nikola Tesla did spend some time in Colorado Springs. He had a laboratory that kind of sits where Memorial Park sits now. Supposedly, he caused our central power plant to shut down. The story is, is that he did overload our electric system one day. I've heard that there's a bill, an invoice around here somewhere that Nikola Tesla was found that he owed because of damage that he did to the power plant. It's a good story and there, it, it may be partially true, it's hard to say. Why is natural gas important to you, important to me, and important to those around us? It is a cleaner burning fuel compared to coal. There is a lot of shift within the electric industry to have natural gas fired power plants. Colorado Springs Utilities does not produce any of its gas. All of the gas that Colorado Springs Utilities uses is produced in natural gas oil fields either in the Panhandle of Texas or in the Wyoming area and then it is transported to us and we take delivery at five different locations along our system. At that point, natural gas then becomes odorized. To this day, we now add mercaptan, a chemical odorant, to our natural gas, which is odorless and colorless and non-toxic in its natural state. But we add that so that our customers can tell if there's a leak. They can smell by that strong, pungent, rotten egg odor of the natural gas that there may be some danger. Some of the types of generation that we have at Colorado Springs Utilities is we have coal-fired plants, we have natural gas-fired plants, we have hydro plants, we have solar farms that are, are within Colorado Springs Utilities. We have a large combined cycle plant, makes about 500 megawatts, called Front Range. We have three coal-fired units still running, uh, Nixon 1, Drake 7, and Drake 6. We have the gas-fired bird salt power plant, makes about 56 megawatts. 
We have our four hydroelectric power plants, Tesla Hydro, Manitou Hydro, Ruxin Hydro, and our newest is Cascade Hydro. The grid is essentially high voltage power lines interconnected at different points and substations throughout the entire country. I think it might surprise our customers that we can trade anywhere in the country power. There's different costs associated with that, of course, but we can move power all over the place. In terms of load, we represent about one half of 1% of the electric load of the Western United States. We have something like 60 substations around town. Radiating from each of those substations are distribution lines. That piece of line coming out of the substation is kind of like the trunk of a tree, and then there are limbs and smaller branches and finally leaves. Colorado Springs Utilities is very committed to providing education to our community and we feel very passionately about getting messages out that provide them with things that are going to make them and their families safer. For example, we have safety education in natural gas and we go in and talk with families and children about how we use natural gas in our homes and how dangerous natural gas is and the things that we can do to prevent accidents in the home with natural gas and what to do if there is a natural gas emergency. For electricity, we really stress the need for safety around infrastructure. We talk to school children about not playing on or near equipment, watching out for downed lines, looking out for guy wires, being aware. And we believe that by educating a younger generation, they will then pay it forward and talk to their families and guardians about the importance of staying safe around infrastructure. Children are great conduits for safety messaging, and we really rely on those young brains and the youth in our community to get those safety messages out. Lawrence Livermore Laboratories has a wonderful graphic that they prepare and they kind of show all the energy inputs into U.S. society and all of the outputs. There's this segment called rejected energy and of the 97 quadrillion BTUs of energy that we used um, in 2017, 66 of those went out as rejected energies, basically waste heat. The things that didn't produce uh, meaningful results for society. I think one of the things that's changed with efficiency is we're noticing a lot more awareness with people around some of the consequences that may be tied to their energy use. So we have generations now that were raised where they were being taught about efficiency and being taught about the power cycle as they went up through the education system. Energy efficiency plays an important role because it helps set the foundation for what we actually need to use for energy and it shrinks the size of the utility that we then need to turn and change into something more renewable. CSU and CSU employees are committed to providing a very reliable service to our customers that's safe and that's provided at a very competitive rate in a very responsible manner. All of our employees espouse that mission and we all strive to make sure that our customers are satisfied. This isn't just a job where we make widgets. Um, we perform a service for the community, a service that our community could not survive without. Not only do I have a job that I love doing, I actually love why I do it and who I do it for. There's times where you have to get up at two o'clock in the morning, you get a phone call, there's a gas leak, you have to go work on it. You go outside and it's 10 below out and you're out there working just to make sure people are safe. And I want the customers to know everything we do out there is to create a safe environment for them. The folks at CSU live in this community, want to make sure that they provide the best service and highest possible service to our ratepayers and our customer owners. You know, they rise to a challenge. Anytime there is a challenge, they're out, always out there, whether it's a gas leak, whether it's a power outage, whether it's a windstorm that knocks out our, our electrical system, they are there. One of our biggest challenges is making sure that we make our next generation decisions correctly. When you're investing in power plants, they can be very large and long-term investments. As the future goes on, we're gonna be looking at different forms of generation and hopefully getting different machines and processes in our system to take in and supply the needs for Colorado Springs as it grows that may be different from what we have now. So we're seeing things that were before kind of individual parts that just function in some way and the utility had to respond to that. We're now seeing that customers have a really important role 
in shaping how they use their energy and how that relates with storage and generation. Best practices and adoption of best practices, whether it's in the form of technology, whether it's in the form of new construction methods, is going to be a major pillar for us in the future. From my perspective, it seems that the energy business is changing in terms of the technology that's being offered and the different ways in which we are monitoring safety and monitoring the usage of our utility. If I'm looking at five or ten years and thinking of where it's going to be, I'm already behind because it'll be different in five years and I should already have the answer for that. What I want our customers to know is that, um, that this is our system. Um, if anything happens, we're all uh, responsible for our system. The thing that keeps me going is that it matters. We're doing things in town that make a difference to people. Smart thermostats, solar power, wind power, smarter homes, interactive homes. In the next 20 to 30 years, I think you'll see a dramatic change in our power plants and their composition and what we will use. And we're seeing dramatic reductions in the prices for renewable energy. And all of that really bodes well for our customers going forward.